Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Water Covers. Welcome to my studio and uh, welcome to my new classroom. Uh, today uh, I'm broadcasting live from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitch, and uh, broadcasting from Chesapeake, Virginia to around the rest of the world. And if this is the first time you're in, uh, please subscribe to my uh, channel. Yeah, it helps my rating and give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like what you see today, and, and uh, tell me about your friend, recommend me to your friends. And uh, I'm in the studio today with my wife, Gloria. Hello. And uh, she'll be monitoring the chat room. I'll put the chat room on live. Yeah, the chat room's on live, so if you have a, a comment or a question, uh, put them on the chat room, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um... Uh, a little bit of tweaking there on the, on, the, on the beginning of the broadcast, but I'll check on that for next week. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to be doing a, a painting, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, color and shapes of color, and I'm going to be drawing a tree and painting a tree. But uh, over here, before I get started, let me show you. Over here, this is what I'm going to be concentrating on. Like I made it up here on the board. I'm going to be concentrating on shapes of color. Make sure I have a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, next of all, I'm going to be concentrating on mixtures of green. Be uh, using the I'll be using the primary colors, uh, red, uh, yellow, and blue. But I'll be uh, mixing mixing up mixtures of green with those colors. Uh, another one I'm going to be working on. I'm going to concentrate on uh, doing two thirds of the foliage of the tree, and one third will be in the branches. And I'm also going to do what we're thinking about painting behind. I'll go through that when I go through the painting itself. So those are the four things I'm uh, focusing on today. And I'll bring those up as I go along with those, but just to give you some ideas. So let me go over to my uh, uh, painting table. And uh, let me then introduce my uh, subject here. This, this is uh, my reference photograph. This is a large oak tree. I took a picture of this uh, outdoors. And uh, it's one of my favorite trees. So that's the oak tree I'm going to use as my subject matter, and then I did a, uh, I did a, I did a de design diagram, and I added some more branches and so forth. Because I want to get some more branches on on the tree here. The tree's got a lot of leaves on it, so I, I drew up some more extra additional branches to show, and you'll see that when I do the painting. Okay, so these two things: the the uh, reference photograph and the design drawing is on my Fun with Watercolor page on my uh, website. And you go there to uh, go to everestwatercolors.com and on the up hand, upper hand, left hand corner of my website, you'll see uh, Fun with Watercolors. And on there you can download these two areas. You'll download the photograph and download the drawing. And you can paint along with me. You help get an, get an idea of uh, uh, painting with, with colors and, and uh, getting uh, different shapes of the colors. That's what we're gonna do today. Let me put this aside. Okay, now what I'm going to show you here is that uh, th these are the primary colors I'm going to use. I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue and uh, yellow lemon. Those are the two uh, Holbein uh, artist watercolors I'm going to use. And I mix those together. I mix a little bit of uh, yellow lemon in with a little bit of blue and I get a nice light green. And I add a little bit more blue to it and I get a darker green. So I can control the, I can control the green color by the amount of mixture I have of these two colors here. And also the third color, which is alizarin crimson, uh, that is the, the red is the uh, uh, complementary color of green. And so I can darken up the mixture. And here you can see the large dark color down here. So I can darken the color up with using the red uh, on top of the green. So those are the three primary colors I'm using for today. So when I looked at the uh, thumbnail, I said I'm going to paint a color and paint a tree in three colors. This is what I'm talking about. I'm going to use a primary color. But primarily, I'm going to be mixing greens and a little bit of red to give me a darker color. So that's the colors in the palette I'll be using today. Put that aside. And in my palette, you can see, in my palette, you can see, here's, a, here's the ultramarine blue up here in the top. Uh, ultramarine blue, and I have a lizard crimson over here on the left side. This is lizard crimson, and down here at the bottom left is uh, is the uh, lemon yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up uh, some colors here, and I've also transferred 
the drawing to uh, my watercolor paper. And it's, it's a quarter sheet of Gemini watercolor paper, 140 pound uh, archival. And it measures uh, 15 inches high and uh, 11 inches wide. Okay? And that's the. Uh, you, you got a high from Vixen 1027. Well, welcome. Thank you, uh, Vixen. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. What I'm going to do, I'll mix up a little bit of green. So I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, again, remember I mentioned I'm going to, I'm going to focus on uh, the, the green colors. So let me take a little bit of this uh, yellow lemon. And I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue in with that. And you'll see I get a light, a light green mixture. A light green mixture. And with a large palette like this, I can, I can load this up with uh, all kinds of color. Put a little more... I want a light. I want to start with a light color fit, a light mixture first. A light color green. I'm going to start with a light green. And get a nice, pretty nice, get a pretty nice load here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to think about the size of the shapes I'm going to make. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm, I'm really going to just put the color in, and uh, cover up some of the sizes and the shapes and so forth. And I'm really going to concentrate on the edges uh, where the leaves are, etc. Uh, this big old oak tree uh, has got uh, lots of leaves on it, but I want to show off some of the branches today. And uh, so I load up the brush here. This is a number 16 round. Uh, it's a Holbein watercolor brush, number 16 round. It does a nice job. I got, it comes to a nice nice point and it holds lots of paint, uh, which comes in handy when you're doing a larger painting. But uh, I wanted to use this one today for a little more control over, the, over doing the branches and so forth. So I'll start with that color there. Uh, then I'm going to uh, put a little more, put a little bit down here on this one. Start off with this light color. Uh, now I might bring down a little bit down in uh, this section down in here, just, just to get some color down in this section. And then uh, what I'll do is come in here. Okay. All right, now I'm going to mix up a little darker, a little darker uh, green. So I'm going to take the, uh, put in some more yellow, yellow lemon, and add a lot more blue, uh, a lot more ultramarine blue to that. It'll give me a nice darker green. So now I'm going to, this is like a medium, like a medium, uh, a medium value of green. Uh, the first, first mixture I put on was a light, a light green. I'm going to put it like a medium green. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some. Put in some shadows here, maybe a little bit of, uh, just, just to uh, add a little bit of uh, interest here to this foliage. Do some shadows in here on this, on this particular section. So I'm adding a little bit of uh, darker green, and I'll go even darker. This is just to get started. I'm just going to get started on this as a... Starting point. Come down here, get some more of uh, that medium green. I mean, I'll call it a medium green mixture. It's uh, a lot more blue mixed in with that yellow. It gives me a, a, a darker mix. Then I'll look around, play around with the edges just a little bit. I can take some of that uh, lighter that lighter color that I have here that would mixed in with that, and I can go in and bring that color down. I can start putting in some of the trunk here, and I'll use that light color as a start. I'll bring that color down, and uh, use some of that color right here on the on the tree trunk. So we're, we're working with uh, shapes of color today. So I'm, I'm really doing a tree shapes, but I'm using uh, the color, the color mixture green uh, in, all of its, in all the varieties that we can do with it. Now also, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take, uh, this is Palo Nabalo. This is a Palo Nabalo dot sprayer. It comes with a white top. It's uh, sold exclusively on EverestWaterCars.com. And what I do with a spot or a spray bottle is uh, I'll shake it up to make sure the mixture. It's got lemon yellow in it, same color I have here in the palette. And then I'm going to put.
put it in the uh, put it in my uh, rinse bucket, and I'm going to spray it out here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a few dots. I'm going to put some jewels. What I call them jewels. That means they put a little bit of yellow splattered around here, along with this dot spray bottle, to give a little more a little more texture and so forth in that tree. That's called priming the pump. I primed the pump and the. Uh, In my uh, rinse bucket, I prime the pump. That uh, gets the uh, mixture up into the. Uh, it gets the mixture up into the uh, sprayer, up into the nozzle of the sprayer, and that helps the uh, helps the, the sprayer perform. And I shake it up to get the uh, the paint mixture going. Uh, put a little more, a little more green down here. At the, a little more of that darker green down here at the bottom. I'm going now. I'm going to work a little bit. Now I'm going to work a little bit on the edges. Uh, and I'm picking up a little greener uh, combination here. I'm picking up a little more of that blue mixture in with the with the yellow. Uh, okay. And I'm thinking also, uh, I'm trying to, okay, I got different shapes. I got this shape up here, a lighter value. I got a, a, a mixture here. I got another shape down in here. And I got this larger shape. So I got different shapes here. I got a top shape. And I got a, a middle size shape over here. And I got a, like a smaller shape over here. Kind of combination. Okay. And I've also got a light and a medium mix here of green. Another comment that uh, they like the variety of shapes in the tree. Absolutely, that's what we're going for, a lot of variety. Uh, let's see what I can go to now. Um, I think I'll put the, uh, I think I'm going to put some more, I'm going to take a little bit more of this yellow combination. I'm going to go back in here and put in some more. I'm going to take the brush now and just go around arbitrarily, and uh, I'm just kind of coming up with a, a little more a little more variety now in these. Uh, I've used a spray bottle, now I'm using a little bit of paintbrush. Uh, in these areas to build up a little more texture I want I want to look, have a, a nice leaf pattern and when you do that is you go in and you make texture in that color and so you put the uh, I'm putting wet on top of dry now and on some of the areas are still damp and that'll give me a little texture also but I'm trying to get a variety of, I'm getting, trying to get a variety of texture here uh, Give it a look of tree, give a look of leaves here in the tree. Yeah, work a little bit more on this. I'm going to work a little bit more on this uh, edge up here. On the edges, I want to make sure I got nice. I'm going to make them, uh, I'm going to make them loose, loose shapes up here because I want a nice variety of edges. Uh, the tree has a, uh, the leaves out there and I want them to have a nice pointed edge. So if you look at enough trees, you look at pictures of trees, you go out and study trees out in, the, out in nature, you'll see uh, all, all kinds of nice shapes out there. But most, most of the times, the majority of trees you have uh, these rough edges. There's no smooth edges on the edge of a tree. You'll see lots of rough edges from the leaves and branches. So we're going we're gonna to make sure we have a rough edge here. We don't want to have any smooth edges. And even out here in the middle, I want to have make sure I got lots of, and I'm working on the edge now. I'm getting a nice uh, uh, loose edge, a nice loose edge look on the edge of the tree. Okay, and I'm going to, before I dry it though, I'm going to put a little more, I'm going to go in now, I'm going to add a little more dark. I'm going to take that uh, mixture again, add a little more blue to that mixture. Now I'm going to go in, and now I'm going to go in, I'll put in the yellow, now I'm going to go in and stick in a little more green now. I want to get the, really get some uh, texture going on here. So this is kind of a loose, a loose painting. Uh, a lot of fun. I like, I like to paint like this. I don't like to have a, uh, just other than the design of what I've done here and the shapes. But really, the shape of the tree and the design. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow dry this. 
uh, take the uh, take the moisture out. Use the blow dryer. So what we've done so far, we've got a mixture of uh, yellow and blue, ultramarine blue and yellow lemon. And we made a couple of a couple of values of green, a light green and a, and a medium medium green. And I've gone in and I've put in uh, lots of color, a variety of shapes. We got this large shape up here, at the top, kind of middle sized shape on the side, and a little or smaller shape over here. So we're painting shapes of color today. And we're, we're painting the outline of a tree. And as we get more and more detail here, we begin to get the characteristic of the tree. I'm going to blow dry this pretty good because uh, uh, I'm going to put another layer in here. I need, I need to have this paint pretty dry because I don't, want the, I don't want the colors to run. So i got to make sure it's nice and dry. So we blow dry here. I'll put the put up a little higher. Uh, just another couple, just another couple seconds here. Okay, that'll be enough. And uh, what I'll do, what I'll do here is, uh, I'll, I'll take a, a tissue and I'll, I'll daub up any extra moisture here. I'm just kind of picking up any extra moisture that may be popping around. And uh, so using a little, a little Kleenex here to pick up extra moisture. Okay. All right, now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and darken in some areas. So I'm gonna mix up uh, a real dark blue now. Real dark blue color, and I'll mix in a little bit of that lemon yellow. I'll get a nice, this will be a darker green, very dark. So I've got now a dark green mixed in with that, and I'm going to bring over a little bit of lithrin crimson. And what that does with that uh, mixture of the complementary color red, it darkens that mixture up even more. Okay, so now I get a nice rich green. Okay, now I want to go in now and I'm going to paint uh, around uh, some of these areas. I'm going to leave the branches light. So I'm going to go in with this dark color. And now I'm painting around my design. I have a design of a nice branch down here. So I'm going to put these branches in and have it really pop out with uh, light against dark. So this is inside the tree where there's lots of shadow and uh, I'm going to show the limbs off. By painting around them. So this is a, uh, this is a, the, uh, one of my things, I, one of the subjects I brought up when I started out was I'm going to paint behind. So I'm painting behind these branches. I'm putting a, a dark color behind these lighter, the lighter branches here on the, on the tree, which will make them stand out. So I'm painting dark behind the light, and that will bring out the, the lighter color. So I'm also, this is also called negative painting. By painting around the object area, by painting around these branches, I'm also painting an, a negative, sh negative uh, shape behind the branches. And see so what I'll do now is put some more color here. I want to. I really want to show off these trunks also. So the trunks here will be uh, lighter than the background branches. Because the shine, the sun is shining above. Uh, the sunlight's up above to the left, and it's coming down. So this area down here will be in shadow. So this will be darker down in this area of the tree. And so I can bring up some of these, uh, these leaves behind this branch here. A little bit over here.
So this is kind of really a well, This is the fun part. I like painting and negative painting. I like to I like to paint the is the section behind to make the the subject show up uh, in in a brighter make the uh, lighter area show up behind the uh, behind the dark the dark shine behind the light and vice versa. You got lights in front of darks and darks in front of lights. I can show this branch off over here a little bit more by painting behind it over here. So I, I really have, a, you know, as an artist, I have a, a I can make a choice of where I want, what I want to have show, and what I want to leave uh, camouflage behind the leaves or whatever. And over here, I think what I'll do is uh, uh, paint behind this. This may just be a starting point. I just want to get a couple darker areas going here, and I can go from that. Now out here toward the edges, toward the uh, the perimeter, or the outside part of the tree, there's a little more light out there, so I can leave some of those areas a little bit lighter. But the in the interior portions here will be darker because they're in shadow. So that kind of reads, uh, that kind of reads correctly. And the section down here might be on the bottom here might be a little bit darker. So I'm kind of interpreting on my own here uh, what I think would happen to this particular tree based on the the light pattern and the dark pattern. Get that in. Let's see. Uh, I guess I want to get this darker down here also. This is kind of phase one. We'll get the get some of the dark started. Okay, now up in here, uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of dark shadow up in this section. These little groups up, this little group up here, this larger group up here is going to have shadow because there's an opening here in a tree. I love opening, so we'll, we'll put that in as a uh, the shadows on the, the, the leaves just before we get to the, the branches. And, you know, as you're painting, a lot of this is all interpretation, too. You can do a lot of things. Uh, and I'm not going to, as you notice, I'm not copying a photograph. The, the photograph was a reference. I just wanted to get the size of the tree, uh, get some ideas of where the branches were located. But then I went ahead and designed, uh, I put in areas that I wanted to show. I wanted to show the, I wanted to show the branches themselves. And if you look at the tree, it's a, I'm not following anything at all other than, you know, so there are some openings here, but I'm just leaving them, I'm leaving my mind just going, you can see the edges are very rough. So uh, right now, in this, this, this is, as an artist, this is what an artist can do. You're free to put in whatever your interpretation is. So this is my interpretation of the lighting up here in this particular trees. And I'm gonna make this, this, this I'm gonna have the sun coming over this side on the top left, so on the right right side and on the right bottom, it's going to be a little bit darker over here. So I can put some darker uh, groups of, of, of leaves over in this area because it's, it's away from the light. So again, my interpretation, um, it's my uh, design idea. And I can go in here and uh, put in some dark around here, this section. Nice dark blue, blue-green, a mixture of green and, and dark blue. Head. Head. Question? Oh, sorry about that. I'm sorry about my head. I was uh, looking down at the, the painting and got carried away. Some branches over there. And let's see. I'm 
I'm going around uh, some of these sections here and I'm uh, trying to add some darker elements here that would connect them a little. I'm trying to connect some of the darker areas so it to read like a pattern of shadow inside the tree. spot up here okay now I think when this uh, this bottom corner over here has, has to be darker because it's it's opposite the Sun because this has to be dark as much much more shadow in this section over here so this section down here would read it would read shadow because it's so far away from the light lighted area so this has to be darker down here Okay. All right. Well, let me dry that. I gotta dry that one because I got some wet paint. So let me put the dryer on. So we added in a lot darker values now, and we uh, what we're doing is we're separating the uh, leaves from the branches. You can see the light be uh, painting behind allows me to identify those branches and. Twigs. We'll dry this off quickly. Okay. All right. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to mix up a real dark. Now I'm going to use a little bit more. I'm going to use another mixture here. I'm going to put the blue. Let me use the larger brush. Uh, so I'm going to add in that uh, ultramarine blue and uh, in, with the yellow, uh, in with the yellow lemon, gives me that green. Then I'm going to mix a lot more of that red in there. I'm going to get really dark now. Real dark with lots of blue. In fact, when you mix, uh, when you mix green and red together, you almost get a brown. Uh, you can get a brown if you mix them in together. I'm getting a real dark mix now of uh, uh, mixing in that alizarin crimson in with the green. So now I'm, gonna, now I'm taking a, a smaller brush. Uh, this is a number six round. Uh, these are Holbein synthetic brushes, a number 16 and a number five, number six round. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is add in some smaller branches. So I'm using a smaller brush. So now I'm going to go in now and go fill in these sky holes with the branches. So these uh, branches up here in this little area up here. We're going to come in and I'm going to connect those in with the branches above. So I'm adding I'm adding a little detail now to the uh, the branch structure of the tree. And I'm using a, a mixture of uh, the blue, the yellow, and the red mixture to give me this dark, this dark mixture color. Right? And you can't tell if it's you can't you can't tell if it's a blue, you can't tell if it's red or green. It's a mixture of the three colors together. So I'm adding in the the little branches that are in between the that are in the sky holes. They're probably the most interesting part of the tree is the, is the small detail in between the limbs and so forth. That's the world of little, little creatures hanging out, the birds and the, the squirrels and those that go and in, in, live around the trees. Let's see, there's a little section over here I want to put a dark spot in. 
these will connect these little lumps of uh, branches I have here. Okay. Uh, okay, now at this point, uh, let's see, I think what I can do, let me, let me dry it just a little bit more now, I'm going to put some, let me put the blow dry on again. Now you can see some of the some of the uh, watercolor dries dries lighter when you put it on. So I got go, I'm going back now. Add a little more, a little more dark now in some of these areas. It lightened up. As soon as the watercolor dries, it gets lighter. So I'm going back in and make them a little bit darker. Just adding another adding another layer of paint on top of what I did. Now that'll darken up the values. That'll darken up the values. Okay. Uh, well, I think we get the idea there. We uh, I got a large group of uh, large group here, uh, and a second group over on this side. That's a second group of, of branches and, and leaves, and there's a third third branch over. So different shapes, a uh, different collection of those areas. So that's the shape of the, that's the color shape that I was looking for. A light color shape. Uh, this is kind of a, a mixture of uh, lights and darks over here, and then over here is more darker shapes on this side, okay? So I kind of got that mixture, and I got the light tree trunk and the darker branches. Okay. Now, down here at the bottom, I got a little bit of background, a little bit of background trees here behind. So let me, let me just play with that a little bit. So I'm going to do, do a, a simple uh, mixture here of green, which is uh, ultramarine blue and yellow lemon and I'll start you want to st when you do something like this you want to start with a lighter color you don't want to get too dark right away you want to get some lighter colors in there uh, but you also want to mix it with a little bit of darker mix so you don't want to have just all the same value you want to mix it up just a little bit so I'm going to have a lighter mix here and mixed in with a little bit of a little darker mix on top on, with that And I think what I can do on this side, what I'll do is I'll make this, I'll make this lighter against this section, I'll make lighter against the tree. So I'm making this the background uh, group of trees, I'll make it lighter, I'll make a light, lighter value here next to the tree. Another, another thing you want to do when you're looking at, uh, say, a background shapes and so forth, you want to make sure you got a variety. You don't want to have a repetition. You want to have a, a small, medium, and large. You want to have a, a different heights, some higher, some lower. So you want to have a different variety. You want to have a variety of shapes uh, or silhouette here of the background trees. Now over here, did a similar thing. I'll put in some uh, just lighter, start out with some lighter color. So I'm just putting a base color here in the background. Just this is this is the far off trees behind this uh, big tree. These are background trees, and over here I think I'll go dark now. I'll put the darker mix over here next to this side. Okay, let that dry a little bit. It's still wet. Those are the background trees, way off in the background. And uh, we'll put a little bit of uh, we'll put a little bit of foreground here. I'll just I'll start out with uh, <clears throat> the light green mix. This is the grass on the ground, so we'll just have a little bit of grass. And I'm gonna leave some white. I'm gonna leave some white showing as a highlight there between the the background and the and the and this could be just grass on the ground behind the tree. I'm going to leave the white as a highlight. 
just to separate the two. Okay, now in the foreground here, in the very bottom, it's at the very bottom, I'm going to get, pick up some of this darker color, and I'm going to put that here in the foreground at the very bottom. And what that does, that'll, that'll keep that'll keep my eye from falling off the bottom of the painting. It'll it'll stop my eye from going any further. Okay, so it kind of holds it right there. Okay, I gotta let that dry. Let's see. All right, I want to do a couple of things now. I want to take this. Uh, I want to take this darker green mix here, and uh, this the sunlight's over here. So this side of the tree, on, the sun is over here coming down. So this side of the trunk area will be in shadow. So I'm going to put a little bit of shadow down on this side. Put a little shadow. To make this tree look like it's a little bit rounded. So this would be the shadow side of the tree trunk over here. And I can, uh, what I do is rinse out the brush and then I can just go down there and just smooth, I just blend that out a little bit to get, make it smooth. So it looks like it's a rounded edge, a little bit darker on that edge there. And I can go back in and put in a little bit darker mix, a little bit darker mix right on the edge. So it's going to show off as the edge of the tree trunk against that lighter background. Okay. And we have uh, yeah, just, just some, I'm going to make a hint here, maybe some shadows up in here. Okay. Alright, that's enough of that. Raisin Spirituality is thanking you for your your tutorials. <laughs> and she keeps learning things every time. Well, that's wonderful. This one here, this is a, really I really wanted to show was the color color of shapes. I mean, the shape of the trees, the, the shape of the branches, the shape of the grouping. There's a group of tr leaves up here with a different sh color. There's another group of leaves with a another color and another one. So it's a variety of color and different shapes. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to put a, a shadow pattern here from the tree. The light's coming from this side. From the left to the right, so I'm going to put a shadow on the ground uh, that the tree is casting on the ground. So I'm going to put that across here. Put the shadow across the ground. It's a little bit wet, so it's still, it's still running a little bit. Okay. Okay, now. Now, what I want to do with these background trees here now, I want to go in and play with those now. So what I want to do is, uh, I'm going to vary some of these. So let's say I start here dark, I may go to the side and put in some uh, little places of dark and lights in here to break, this, to break this tree line up a little bit. And what I can do here is I can... Uh, I can put in the, I can put in some branches. I can put in some. It's still wet. As you can see how, when it when the paint is wet, it starts to spread. Now over here it's light, so I, over here it should be light, it should be darker over here, or drier on this section. So what I'll do is I'll put some branches over here. Uh, it looks like uh, maybe limbs coming off a tree. Are you painting wet on dry or wet on damp? Right now it's uh, wet on damp, but right now this is dry. I'm touch it and it's dry. So right now I'm painting wet on wet on dry. So and that's what you have to watch. In, in watercolor, you need to watch uh, what area is dry and what area is wet. Because and if you want to paint in wet and wet, that's fine. But you know the paint's going to move. It's going to spread, and that's fine. You get ni lots of nice combinations of colors that way. But if you don't want it to spread, you got to wait till it dries or or blow dry it or whatever. And on the demonstration today, I'm using a blow dryer. Usually, I let it dry. I set a, 
put it aside for a while and come back when it's dry and finish it off. Okay, so I made a positive bush here with a, with a trunk here. I made a negative bush. So I just painted around the trunks and uh, made the branches or made the, the tree a little bit lighter. Uh, I'm kind of playing around with these shapes over here a little bit just, just to give me some a little variety. There, there is no right way or wrong way to do this. Just practice and... Uh, the more you work, the more you practice, the better the better you get at it. Here I'm just painting a little bit, a little bit of negative positive train, a little bit of, and then I can play along here with the ground a little bit. Put some, maybe put a little texture on the ground, some low bushes along the edge of the ground, next to these trees. Dixon ten twenty seven says it looks amazing. <laughs> and see over here, I can do the same thing. I'll go over here. I'll just do. A, I'll do a couple over here. Uh, not trying to repeat it, but just to give you, it's, it's good practice to go in and do a little negative, a little negative painting. Uh, and here I'm going to I'm going to paint a larger area around the light bush. So I got a light bush here, which is a nice green, a light green, and then I'm going to paint a dark around it, and that'll that'll make it pop out. It, the light will pop out from that area. So I'm going to come down here. Here, and notice I try not to make a circle or, or a round. I try to give a little, a little irregular shape, so that could be a, a, a small tree there in with the in the light tree and with a background behind it. I'm not going to put any buildings in here, but you could put little buildings in here and things like that. I just just want to do. This is going to just be a landscape, so it's going to have trees and bushes and things like that. And thing, I got a dark here, so I'm going to put a little bit of dark over here so it doesn't contrast too much. There's more dark on this side than on this side. And then I can do one more. Uh, this is almost dry. It's you, You'll see, as soon as you put the paint on there, this is still, still a little bit damp, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I'm going to put it in another I'm going to put it in another positive tree which will be dark and then put some bushes along the ground little dark bushes there okay so you can really play with that as you go along Now this one here, uh, I can take the, let me see if I can take this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to dry this up a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of moisture off this section and put that, I'm going to put that shadow back in again. So you can go back to water, you can go back in and make changes as you go along. You don't have to stay with what you had. So there I kind of take that, I wiped up some of that excess moisture. I put the shadow pattern back in. Yeah. Uh, another thing I can try to do is on this one here. It's still bent down. I'm going to take a damp. I'm going to take a brush, and I can lift out some of that color. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a brush. It's uh, take the moisture out of it. Squeeze the moisture out of the brush. Go down here while, where it's still damp, and I can pick up some of that. I can pick up some of that wet paint now and I can put that trunk back in there, okay? So that might look a little more a little more realistic there. And I can go back in with this one and put a little more color in there. So, you know, I'm gonna just fine-tune this a little bit. That's just, you know, not much difference. And if I really have to do something, I can go in and I can add in color on top of that. Okay. Now see this one here. I'm still getting a, I'm still getting a wet area here. It's okay. Paper's still a little bit damp. Sometimes you just have to wait and be patient and let it dry, uh, or use a blow dryer and blow it. But I'm just trying to get it to finish, just to finish it off here. 
Okay. And I could, and I have, I could add a little bit of uh, my titanium white here, my white. Okay, I've got uh, I've got Chinese white here on my on my palette. Uh, Chinese white. What I'll do there, I'll just show just just a quick demonstration. Put it in my palette for a second, and then uh, I'll load up my brush. And I can take a little bit of just take a little bit of Chinese white. Go back here, and I can put that. If I miss if I missed a spot, I can go back in and put that. Color back in there. All right, so let's put that back. Okay, I put the trunk back in on that one bush. See, <laughs> just just to see what I did there. I put a little bit of white on the bottom of that. Okay, now the last this is the last thing I want to do. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is to, it, the the tree is uh, pretty well done. I'm, now now that I've finished it off a little bit and uh, paint's kind of is. I test it with the back of my hand, okay, and it's pretty dry. It's not perfectly dry, but it's uh, dry enough to do what I want to do. I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of paint on the brush. It's going to be like a mixture, not real dark, and not real like a medium, like a medium value. And what I'm going to do now, this, the sun's coming this way, the sun's coming down. And what I'm going to do is put some shadows in here across these branches, and I'm just going to go in there and just hit it with a little bit of light, where the light's coming through the trees. Uh, coming down across the uh, the branches to give a little more idea of where the light's flowing from, okay? Because the light's gonna the light's gonna have different uh, gonna gonna go across the tree and it's gonna have show it's gonna show a characteristic to a pattern. So the light's coming across there. I think that looks kind of neat, and uh, we can come down here and put a little shadow on this trunk. So that the shadow pattern now across the trunk uh, of the cast shadow from the leaves and the branches and so forth. Okay, that's another little thing we can do. Now I haven't done anything with the background, and that's I wasn't going to do that today. But you, we could spray, we could spray blue on the sky, or we could have put the sky in first and then painted the tree on top. It's a question about um, the paper and paint. That you're using, she missed the beginning of the video and was interested in that information. Oh, the beginning. What, what paper? Paper is just Gemini 140 pound uh, watercolor paper, archival 140 pound, and it's a quarter sheet. It's a fit 11 inches wide and uh, 15 inches long or tall. So uh, the watercolor is uh, is the whole binds of artist watercolor, and so these are in my website, and they'll be on. On the description of the video, when I finish, it'll be on my website, uh, on EverestWaterColors.com. We'll have we'll have the video on there with uh, my uh, videos on EverestWaterColors.com. And uh, uh, a heat gun that's pretty hot. Uh, sometimes, if you're very careful, I use a hair dryer. Uh, a heat gun would 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 dry it also, but you'd be very careful because a heat gun is very is very hot. And it could burn. It could burn the paper. It could scorch it, and so forth. You gotta be very careful with that. But if you held it far enough away and just dried it, if you're in a, if you're in a hurry, you want to dry it out. Mainly, what I recommend is when you're painting uh, a painting, say a quarter sheet like this, is to paint one section or paint one layer. If you're going to go wet on dry, let that dry. Just set it aside for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then take a break, and then come back, mix your colors, and go in and do the second layer. Uh, if you're doing wet on wet, of course, you, you put the first layer in, and then like I did today, I added I added color with my spray bottle, my dot spray bottle, and I added color on top of wet on top of wet, so that the colors were spread around. Okay, uh, so it all depends on how you're applying the paint. You want to you want to experiment with wet on wet and wet on dry, uh, and that's how you can do it. I prefer to leave it, let it dry naturally. Wait 15 or minutes, take a break, and come back and do it again. But for demonstrations, I use the hair dryer to make it to dry it down. And okay, I think that turned out pretty. Let me put a let me put a mat around this. And then while while I'm painting, also I'll, I'll come along. I'll put I'll put a mat board around the painting to take a look at it. 
Uh, that kind of gives me an, an impression of uh, what it would look like in a painting. And that gives me some final, let's see, get that up there where you can see it. I'm going to move it up even higher. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I can't get any. I, that's as high as I can get it right there. That's as high as I can get it. That's as high as I can get it. Okay, so putting a mat around the, uh, putting a mat around a painting uh, during the pro during the painting process, and of course when you're finished, then you can take a look at uh, the end results. Uh, the only thing that would improve this painting would be, say, a little back, a little background color, and probably a, a, a light blue, or uh, maybe do even a, you could do a sunset in behind if you wanted to. But that would improve the painting just by adding a background. Now I did, uh, I did another one earlier. I did two others earlier. Let me just show you what I did here. Okay, I did one here. I used, I used a little more, I used a little more. Uh, uh, Alyssa and Crimson in this one, I added more red to it. You can see the red color, it turned it into a brown. So this would almost be, uh, if I added orange on top of it, I could make this into a fall color, because this could be almost a fall painting. So I could take the same painting, change the colors a little bit, I could make it into a fall, I could add a little more orange to this, and make this into a fall scene uh, with orange and reds and yellows. That would be another, another version. Before the leaves completely dropped off, you could have all the, you could have brown, and orange and reds to give it a, a, an autumn color. And you can see the background trees I did here, I did the same thing. I made the shadows and, and shapes and so forth. Okay. Uh, this is now this was an experimental one. I just I just went ahead and just did brush strokes on this one. So I just have was just having fun. I just put a piece of paper down, got my paintbrush out and just did some brush strokes. That's all I did. And I painted uh, a light color down first. Then I added darks to define the branches and so forth. So that's another thing you can do, just, just experimenting with the, the color, the shapes, and so forth. So today's, today's uh, demonstration was about shapes and color. The color and shapes. That's what I was really trying to get across. And there's a lot of fun. Trees are, trees are one of my favorite subjects anyway. So let's go back to my uh, main camera. So... Oh. <laughs> well, let me let me kind of summarize here what I was doing. Uh, you can see here on my chart, shapes of color was my main. I was thinking about shapes of, shapes of color, uh, mixtures of green, which I did plenty of lights and uh, with with the yellow and blue mixtures of green, and add a, a little bit of red to even darken it up. Then I was working on two thirds foliage and one third branches, which I think I come. And I was painting behind, which means I put the dark behind the light to give me a uh, an impression of, of dimension of dimension in the painting itself. So I think I accomplished all those things. And I'm I'm pretty happy with it. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, put them on the put put them in the comments below. I appreciate all the comments today. I really appreciate your input, and uh, share your share this uh, photo, video with your friends. Let them know what I'm doing. I'll be back again next Thursday at two o'clock uh, to do another painting exercise of some kind. I, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. And uh, on Facebook, you can do uh, a paint along. I got the photograph and the and the picture I put in the very beginning of this video, which I'll have a link in the video today of how to get there. But go to Facebook to my Everest Watercolors Art Group on Facebook, and there you can download your painting, and I can take a look at it and make comments. I can help you out and if you have questions. So uh, so uh, this evening, I'll be back at 7.30 p.m., and I'll be doing uh, simply drawing with ever, and I'll be doing color tonight. I've been doing uh, I've been doing uh, graphite pencils and sketches, and then, but tonight we're going to start working in the color pencils. So you might enjoy seeing that. Okay, that's gonna be a little bit different. All right, it'll be seven thirty this evening uh, on the same channel. Uh, it, it's been broadcasted. All right, well thank you very much for uh, signing in, and I'll see you next week at two uh, two p.m. on Thursday. Uh, 2 p.m. Thursday, Eastern Standard Time.